Welcome, it's David Chankel. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me here, Brother of Metal. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, thanks so much. You know, you've given us a, such great music. We'd love to know who your heroes were. Who inspired you to want to do this yourself? Well, when it first started off, my father, because he was a guitar player, and uh, he put the guitar in my hands for the first time, and mm -hmm. once that happened, I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do, and over over the years, you know, there's been so many different guitar players growing up that influenced me. I mean, in the early years, I would, you know, Michael Shanker, Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vai, Uli Roth, those guys, and as I got a little older and got into more of the, the fusion stuff, you know, Alan Holsworth, Frank Gimbaldi, so, uh, you know, there's been different guys in different time frames of my life that, that I really like and that I've been attached to. Frank Marino from Mahogany Rush, mm -hmm. another guy, you know, that have had influences on me until you kind of find your own path and really come into your own maturity. But those were some of the guys I really dug, you know. And in the earlier years, I liked the early Paul Gilbert stuff, Racer mm -hmm. X, Jason Becker, that kind of stuff, that neoclassical stuff. That was a big influence on me, too. So you took a little little piece from everybody and yeah, kind of mixed it up. Yeah, from everybody because there's something to it. learn from so many great musicians out there. I, I just can't narrow it to just one person, you know. There's yeah. a, a little bit from each guy and, you know, it certainly has helped me. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Now, tell us about the evolution when you were able to record your own music, you know. How, how, how did that come about? Well, where you that's, really that's just like part of growth is you're learning your instrument, being influenced by the music that you have, and, and, and going to studios and for the first time and actually playing and recording that first song, whether it's an original or a copy song, just going through the experience of recording and not just like a cassette player in your house or a little four track recorder, we're actually going into a real studio and uh, you know, that's quite an experience you learn as you grow as an artist and as a band and technology grows. I mean, these days, the, the recording gear you can buy, you can fit right in your bedroom and, and produce great CDs, killer mm -hmm. demos because of the technology. But but that's all part of the growth, recording, mm -hmm. knowledge, understanding it, and uh, learning to use it in your favor. Sure. Definitely. Well, we're all fans of Man of War. You know, tell us how you met Joey and all this came together. Well, I was uh, playing in Chicago, where I'm from. I'd won a couple of guitar competitions. And uh, they were in town doing the Fighting the World Tour, and Ross and I, Ross the Boss, the mm -hmm, guitarist mm -hmm. at the time, the original member, mm -hmm. we had met, became friends, and uh, hooked up, and I hadn't met the other guys in the band, it was just Ross, saw him play, and about a year and a half later, they came back in town to do some more shows, and they were recording the Triumph, or excuse me, the Kings of Metal album. Well, Joey and I had met, we started hanging out, and then I just found out through them, Ross was planning on being out of the band. Eric Adams and Joey came and seen me play two nights in a row at the Thirsty Whale. We hit it off, and uh, they hired me to be in the band, and that was like in 88. And it changed my life. It put me on the map. I toured with them all over the world for the Kings of Metal record. And then we sat down for about three years and wrote Triumph of Steel together. Mm -hmm. And uh, that went platinum for me. So I'm very mm -hmm. proud of that. They put me on the map with that. And as time goes on, things change. And I was still going in and out of college to get my degree. And then when I got out of the band, I went back to Roosevelt University mm -hmm. and got my degree in jazz and classical guitar and music theory mm -hmm. and started my own band, DSG David Shankle Group. Mm -hmm. And to, to prove to the fans out there and people that know us that Man of War and I were still brothers of metal, I signed to his label, Magic Circle Music. Okay. We put out the Ashes to Ashes CD, and then we put out Hellborn, and on the Ashes CD we did the video Ashes to Ashes, and we also did a video called Calling All Heroes, which was our way of thanking all the heroes of 9-11. Mm -hmm. It's like a power ballad, like kind of a, kind of like a, a, a dream on from uh, Aerosmith, mm -hmm. but in our own way and uh, it's done really well for us overseas and uh, every year that video gets a lot of plays and hits because it's literally about heroes and 9-11 and we did two versions of it the first one had some scenes of the buildings coming down mm -hmm. we felt why don't we do another one and edit that out so the people that see this that may have had family or people in there might not get hit so hard yeah. you know so on the CD you have part one or part two and you can take your choice of which one you want to watch mm -hmm. and plus the main video ashes to ashes as well mm -hmm. so that was that was my stepping out of man of war having my own 
Dave Shankle band and doing my thing, and then the Hellborn CD, and now I have a new label and the new record coming out called Still a Warrior on Pure Still Records. We're looking at around February or March, so I'm happy for that. New band, new record, going good. My own line of guitars with Grossman Guitars. Uh, Kaler Tremolos, we're working on a signature tremolo with me and tons of other endorsements. Product I use from EMG to Ernie Ball Strings, Morley Dunlop pedals, you know, the list goes on. Randall amps, dime amps, you know, a lot of gear that I like to use and stuff that, stuff that I use, I, some I don't endorse, some I do, but uh, you know, that's just to mention some of them that are really important to me, man. Yeah. Sure. Talk about the, uh, the excitement of going from playing in clubs in Chicago, to stepping out on some stages in Europe or or places with Man of War oh, and just seeing crazy, that. Man. When I got Man of War, we did some warm up shows and just kind of toured around the stage and like 500 seater clubs and stuff mm -hmm. and even smaller clubs. Mm -hmm. But it, it prepared us to go to Europe and I remember we played in San Sebastian, Spain and it was like 30,000 people mm -hmm. and it was like my first really big stage with them mm -hmm. and it was just like an ocean of heads. Yeah. You know, and it was a, that rush and that adrenaline, you just, you just, it's hard to describe until you're really standing there, but it's an amazing feeling to have that many people. And Man Work has a lot of fans in Europe, and they're strong fans. They're some of the best fans in the world. And I'm glad to have been a part of that and have some of that legacy to take with me mm -hmm. and uh, and to move it into my own band, what I'm doing, and standing on my own two feet, you know. Sure. And, uh, and I'm proud to do that, and I just keep plugging away until I drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of feed off that energy sure. and it inspires you sure. to go higher. Exactly, and, and just, you know, I get a lot of Man O'Hare fans, hey, wished you were in the band, but we love what you're doing with DSG, and you know, from Ross to me, and now Carl, and everybody, that we've all done our mark for Man of War, and I was proud to be a part of it. Sure. Yeah. And obviously the business has changed a lot, but people still want to rock. Yeah. The guy that's just picking up a guitar today, the band in the garage, what advice do you have to give to them to that's really very simple. stay in their own style? Is, is to keep the drama out of your band and I know it's hard to do even with bands uh, us and, and being a new band get along with the guys give everybody a chance to say their piece work as a team and find either the best guitar player or a couple of guitar players and take lessons from them learn what you can go out there and get all the instructional DVDs out there there's so many of them or just go on YouTube and put in a style of music you like and there's great players up there giving away free licks and techniques with technology now all over learn what you can fast it doesn't matter if you're a drummer bass player singer Check this stuff out online, rent these DVDs, buy them. It will only help educate you and move you along faster. But my best advice is find a teacher that you can have that one-on-one -on -one access or like I do. I have a music school I teach at in Chicago. I do online lessons on Skype so you can see each other in your room, in my room. And I have students that come to my house because it's good to have that inner interactions. Videos and stuff are great and tabs and you can stop and slow them down. But to be in the room with the, with the teacher you know it's just a little bit more personal mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the advice I give to any of the students what you put into it is what you get out of it and hope for the best <laughs>